The endocrine system secretes hormones that coordinate long-acting responses, including reproduction, development, energy metabolism, growth, and behavior. In my last video, I covered chemical signals, including water-soluble versus lipid-soluble hormones. In this video, I'll be covering the specific glands and organs involved in each hormone pathways. All the hormones have been color-coded by the glands or organs that secrete them. The hypothalamus receives information from the nervous system and initiates responses through the endocrine system. The posterior pituitary stores and secretes hormones that are made in the hypothalamus, including oxytocin, which triggers the mammary glands to produce milk, and stimulates uterus to contract through a positive feedback loop during labor. The posterior pituitary releases another hormone known as ADH, antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin, which regulates social behavior and increases water reabsorption in the kidneys, which decreases blood osmolarity. The anterior pituitary makes and releases hormones under regulation of the hypothalamus. Non-tropic hormones which target non-endocrine tissues include prolactin, which also stimulates milk production in the mammary glands, and MSH or melanocyte-stimulating hormone, which regulates pigmentation in melanocytes. Tropic hormone regulates the function of endocrine cells or glands. Growth hormone has both tropic and non-tropic actions. It stimulates the production of growth factors in liver, bones, and many other organs. An excess of growth hormone can cause gigantism, while a lack of growth hormone can cause dwarfism. The anterior pituitary secretes four strictly tropic hormones, all regulated by hypothalamus hormones indicated in red. When the body feels cold, sensory neurons in the hypothalamus triggers it to secrete thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH, which in turn stimulates anterior pituitary to secrete Thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. TSH then stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormones, which includes T3 or triiodothyronine and T4 or thyroxine. T3 and T4 then stimulates body tissue to increase cellular metabolism, thus warming up the body. T3 and T4 also inhibit TRH and TSH in a negative feedback loop. The hypothalamus also secretes gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GnRH, which stimulates anterior pituitary to release follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, and luteinizing hormone, or LH. FSH and LH stimulates gonads, or reproductive organs. In males, these hormones stimulate the Leydig cells in the seminiferous tubules of the testes to synthesize androgens, mainly testosterone, which stimulate development and maintenance of male reproductive system and male secondary sex characteristics. In females, LH and FSH stimulates the ovaries to produce estrogens, most importantly estradiol, which are responsible for maintaining the female reproductive system and developing female secondary sex characteristics. They also stimulate progestin, which include progesterone, to maintain the uterus. More details about the hormone cascades of FSH and LH will be covered in future videos discussing reproductive systems. During stress, the hypothalamus stimulates crototropin-releasing hormone, or CRH, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete adrenocortotropic hormone, or ACTH, which stimulates the adrenal cortex to release corticosteroids including glucocorticoids such as cortisols that leads to increase of blood glucose by breaking down proteins and fats and suppression of the immune system. The other class of corticosteroids are mineral corticoids, including aldosterone which is involved in the RAAS, which stands for renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The liver secretes inactive angiotensinogen, which can be converted to angiotensin 1 by the proteus renin. Renin is secreted by kidneys when the juxtaglomerular apparatus or JGA senses a decrease in blood volume or pressure. Angiotensin 1 is then converted to angiotensin 2 by the angiotensin cleaving enzyme or ACE. Angiotensin 2 has various target cells. It can stimulate hypothalamus to trigger the feeling of thirst and stimulating vasoconstriction, and finally stimulating the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone. 
which increases sodium and water reabsorption in our kidneys, thus increasing the blood volume and pressure. Short-term stress can stimulate the hypothalamus to release nerve signals that travels through the spinal cord to trigger adrenal medulla to release epinephrine and norepinephrine, which increases blood glucose metabolism and blood pressure. Two antagonistic hormones regulate the homeostasis of calcium in our blood. When blood calcium level rises, thyroid gland releases calcitonin, which simulates calcium deposition in bones and secretion by kidneys, which in turn decreases the level of blood calcium. On the other hand, when blood calcium level decreases, parathyroid gland releases parathyroid hormone or PTH, which stimulates the release of calcium from bone and also stimulates kidneys to activate vitamin D, which promotes intestinal uptake of calcium from blood, thus increasing the level of blood calcium. During hypoxia or low oxygen, the kidneys releases erythropoietin, which stimulates the bone marrows to produce more red blood cells. The pineal gland secretes melatonin, which regulates circadian rhythm and pigmentation. And finally, the pancreas secretes two antagonistic hormones to regulate blood glucose level. The alpha cells produce glucagons, which increases blood glucose level, while the beta cells produce insulin, which decreases blood glucose level. In insects, molting and development are controlled by a combination of hormones. The insect brain secretes prothoracic tropic hormone, or PTTH, which triggers the prothoracic gland to release ectosteroid, or ectosome. Ectosome promotes molting in the presence of juvenile hormone and development of adult characteristics in the absence of juvenile hormone. The juvenile hormone promotes the retention of larval characteristics.